All right, Dan Dockage, we are at the home of Texas A&M, which means we're at the home of what? Well, we're at the home of football, we're at the home of barbecue, and we are the home of the 12th man. You know who leads the 12th man? Who? The yell leader. Are they right here? These are the yell leaders. Go, boys. Show us what you got. Texas A&M and to right? lead the cheers all night long as we welcome you inside Reed Arena tonight for an SEC showdown between the Auburn Tigers of Bruce Pearl and the home team Texas A&M Aggies. We'll gig them tonight. We'll do a lot. Dan, you got a really good guard matchup in this one tonight between these two clubs. Yeah, A&M coming off a big win and a rare win in Tuscaloosa. T.J. Starks knocked in the game winner. That's for Texas A&M. And then on the other side, watch number one, Jared Harper. He makes everything go as Teddy Valentine makes his presence known. <laughs> Already. <laughs> Christian Mekawulu will jump up 21 for AM and they control the ball. Auburn's really struggled on the road, especially when it comes to shooting. Keep an eye on that. You know, they have. They have three losses around the road, but man, Duke in Maui, North Carolina State, and everybody in the SEC, maybe not across the country, understands the job Kermit Davis is doing at Ole Miss. He's doing a fantastic job regardless of losing last night. A couple of early deflections, so active hands from Okiki. We've seen the defense of Bryce Brown, who's terrific on both ends of the floor. Game will revolve around Starks, was with Kentucky last night. Ashton Hagens took that game over. Little point guard back-to-back -back nights for these two teams. Another ball deflected, this time a turnover. Well, that's what Auburn does, averaging 20 turnovers by their opponents, as good as anybody in the country. And it's exactly what you said, active hands. So many kids want to put their hands out but not make them active. Auburn demands that they're active. And they will launch threes, like a lot. Like most of the night, they'll shoot threes. Their shooting percentage on the road, a little different than at home, and we got five on the shot clock. Brown finds Wiley, the big fella, goes right to the rim and shoots it too hard. Man, he was right on the rim, and the ball exploded out of his hands, Ravi, and I think he shot it over the square. Savion Flag, second leading scorer on this team, trying to go a little one-on-one. -on -one. Shot misses, it's tapped out. Good offensive rebound there by Nico Wulu to keep it alive. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Get it out. Reset, because this is a guard-oriented A&M team. You know, talking to Bruce Pro, you just saw two guys really defending Starks right there. That's going to happen a lot tonight. How about Stark? Change of speed. Slow, fast, missed the reverse. Okiki fires a three. That one's off to the right, and a real good box out. Ball came off his... Ring and little finger, which you can't do. You got to have it, off, have it come off the big three, which is the pointer, middle finger, and ring finger, and that's just crazy. Savion Flag took his eye off it. That's Literally, crazy. short stop, took his eye off the ball, went right through his legs. It did, but reminiscent of, well, I'm not going to get into it. Um, you can't drive it to the baseline unless you have a layup or you know where you're going with it, and that time you just jump up and throw it out of bounds. Cold shooting early on a rainy, drizzly night here in College Station. There's a pick, and this may be the first two as Brown lays it up and in off the window. Man, that was really good. That was a hard shot. Brown jumped sideways, but you know what he did? He kept his chin on the rim, and he squared his shoulders. No surprise. Kid scored over 1,200 points. I, Bammy, I think watching film on Auburn, they're, they're not as good as Tennessee, and I know you do the SEC a ton. But they're pretty good. I mean, their second weekend of the tournament, good. Yeah, they could be. When they make their shots, as I had another coach tell me recently, when they make their shots, they're going to win. When they don't make their shots, they could lose to anybody. Well, that's some deep thoughts right there. But they're so dependent on the outside shot, more so the three-point shot than others. They are. And, and I talked a long time this morning with Bruce Pearl about that. You know, he took Wiley out. And one of the reasons Wiley 
know if he, it's not that he doesn't fit. It's just that he's so different than everybody else and doesn't have great touch, and it limits your driving opportunities when you put a big guy right there on the block. Now, college basketball and, and the pros has gone away from a big post guy. Yeah. Stuff it in there. Now, if you're going to be a post guy, you're going to be 6'8 and skilled, pass it out, then that's one thing. But the big, stiff ish post, yeah. Nice. Look, they had two monsters here last year as that ball's laid up and in by Savion Flag. There's a kick. Brown three. Short follows his own shot, but Starks grabs it and they get some numbers. Here's Starks. Same That's thing. Off. As soon as he shot it, it went left. Man, they had Robert Williams here last year. One of their big fellas. Tyler Davis was a beast. Very different lineup. Mm. This year for Billy Kennedy. You know, how about Harper? I mean, that's bas that, that's modern basketball right there. Take it, get a ball screen, do whatever you want to do out of the ball screen. That time he refused it, went to the rim. You know, think about Virginia. Virginia brings in the Clark kid. Why? Because they got dominated by a little guard. Little guards can disrupt. Here we go again. That's a disruption by Harper. Not stopping at a big time collision, and we're going to get an offensive foul. Ted Valentine, a little delayed call, but he calls the offensive foul on Jared Harper. Used to be in basketball, a little guy against a big guy pulls up. Just pull up and shoot your jump shot. That's all you got to do. I mean, it, look, there is, there is with the ball responsibility. And if you're going to come down and get to the rim, you've got to recognize real quick, big guys, they just pull up and shoot. You miss, you miss. Move on. Anthony McLemore comes in to play down low, as you mentioned. Wiley goes to the bench. McLemore coming off a good game. Flag, good ball fake, and a great dish down low. How about the hands to deflect it away, but right into the hands? Of Savion Flag, who's got four early. You mentioned it. Really good ball fake. Spread, got the defense scrambling. Next thing you know, you're laying it in. Ball fake, pass fake before you dribble it. McLemore, he fires a three, and that goes down. That's Tayshawn Prince. That's the old set shot with the lefty right there, Ravi. We were with Georgia last night. They get six lefties on the team. Green said, I've never had more than two. There is a theory in basketball you can never win with a left-handed point guard. I don't know why. Tiny Archibald used to win. A little bit. De'Aaron De De Fox, a tiny one. De'Aaron Fox. What's he won? He hadn't won yet. Two on one, Harper and Brown, alley-oop. There it is, and he oh. misses the dunk. Look out. Okiki had it. <laughs> Not, and flag played horse with him. I don't want to stop this conversation. There's a lot of good left-handed point guards, but how many of them win? We'll think about that during this timeout. We're at Reed Arena, Auburn and A&M. We have the pleasure, the opportunity to recognize a guy that has grinded for four straight years practiced against every single one of our bigs. Cole Blackstock, you were on scholarship. Yeah. Well, guess what? We have an opportunity to give another scholarship. Yeah. Will McCoy! Gotta be the greatest moment for a coach to be able to do that. It is, Hands out two scholarships. Will McCoy, they bombard him. It's got to be a great moment. They did that for my son at Michigan. They brought in police officers. It was a great moment for the coach. It was a great moment for my son, but it was a guy that was paying 26 k a semester. It was a great moment for dad. No doubt about it. <laughs> it was no an unbelievable moment. <laughs> that is a great moment. See Tommy. more and more of that. Yeah. There's football players, basketball players. You know, as your son, and so many kids play without scholarship, then all of a sudden their efforts are rewarded that way. Yeah, it's just John Beeline's great about it. Most coaches are great about that. And certainly Bruce is as well, as you just saw right there. Kurt Mallory at Indiana State just did it, and it was a celebration. It went a little viral. It's just cool. It's just very, very cool. So 9-4 here early. 
guards getting the job done for Auburn so far. There's a three. That one drops. Yeah, really good pass. Chandler made a really, really good pass because he wanted to go to the middle, read the defense, and skipped it to a wide open, wide open shooter. Wendell Mitchell had 18 against Alabama in their win, 10 of which came in the first half. So that's a turnover. Was it deflected? Mm, that looked like I think it was deflected by an Auburn player, but. Top of the key, you got to look down first. Like you're going to see right here. Chandler comes off. He's going to look down. He's trying. And then all of a sudden, he recognizes that, you know what? The guy in the corner is open. Let's go to him. You don't just throw the ball to a player, you throw it away from the defense. And that time, the pass was perfect away from the, or excuse me, away from a helping defender. We'll learn a little bit more about Wendell Mitchell. You a, uh, you're a fisherman? Yeah. Bass, yeah. bass fisherman? I, I, I like to fish, and I like to fish for bass, yeah. Morally, I like to catch him. I don't necessarily like to fish. I like to catch You just like to catch him. Wendell is a huge bass fisherman. We'll talk with him in just a little bit about one of his, uh, one of his moments he remembers that didn't go so well as a fisherman. Talk about the bodies of Auburn, and especially that guy, Malik Dunbar, who's in the game now, 6'6", kind of chiseled. I mean, I know what you know, you know what that feels like. No, no, I, I know what it looks like. <laughs> but he is, and, and Ravi, you're absolutely right. I mean, Bruce Pearl has made, obviously, most teams do, but Bruce's guys, man, they are built. I mean, Wiley is, I saw him in the hotel today. Holy cow. And then this kid here, Dunbar, you don't get a better body than that in college basketball. Right. Wiley's huge. Okiki's huge. But even last night, we were watching Obey Day play for Georgia. Oh. Man. Reed Travis. Man. Reed Travis. Obviously Schofield and Williams. Men. Big men. Reed Travis. 28 years old. He's an old man. <laughs> <laughs> At least in Kentucky parlance. Mitchell feeling it. Buries another one. There's your, there, there's your elixir right there. Yeah, if you're going to help, which is a high ball screen, and Auburn's going to do a good job of helping, the elixir is find the open man and drill the shot, but you got to make the shot. Wide open McLemore fires another three. He's two for two from three point land. How about that? Tayshawn Prince again. Wait on the defense, a foul and a basket. Bruce Pearl is hostile. Now he's hot at the referees, but he's hot at his team because nobody ran down the court. Look at his shot here. A little ball screen driving. Nobody ran. You know, when a big guy beats you down, the ball beats you down, the wings beat you down, Bruce Pearl was stomping angry, and he should be. You score, who cares? you got to sprint. You don't jog, you don't backpedal, you sprint. Josh Nebo completes the three-point play. He had 21 against Alabama, and he went 10 of 12 in that game. So a good start for Nebo as he comes into the game. Nebo kind of dominated the game. He did. I mean, from a physical standpoint, he was big, he was strong, he was willing. Transfer out of St. Ooh. Francis, Pennsylvania, the reverse. A little wild, but misses. So Nebo was at St. Francis. He had 146 blocks in a couple of seasons there, but he got homesick. He missed being away from home. He missed having his family be able to either watch him on television, the SEC network, or ESPN, ESPN2. St. Francis doesn't get put on TV all the time. He came home, and he loves it. He feels much more comfortable now. Well, good for Texas A&M, bad for St. Francis, right? Yeah. I mean, because this is a big-time body as well. Starks drives, nope, won't go. Contested layup. And McLemore comes away with it. Saw Mitchell camping out in the corner for a three. He didn't get it. Samir Doughty's going to get called for a walk. There's Billy Kennedy. He is in his. He got seventh season? Yeah, seventh season as AM coach. He thought this season. He'd have a different looking team. He knew he was going to lose Williams. He was going to lose Tyler Davis. But there have been some other injuries. Admon Gilder likely going to be the team's leading scorer. Had a blood clot. Recently had surgery. 
So there's a chance they get Gilder back next season. Not going to be back this season. He could come back for a fifth year after losing his eligibility to play this season. But that was one of those injuries came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah that's just, uh, you know, glad, glad the kid's okay. The kid had, you know, they, he's kind of reading up on him, and he had you know, pain or whatever. And finally, as you said, they found the problem, the blood clot, and that's just crushing. You know, last year, Ravi, I know you did a, a bunch of games, but, man, when Texas A&M walked into the building. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. They were... I'm not going to say the perfect looking basketball team, but close. Ooh, nice. Good pass. They're moving it. They're moving it, but nothing's getting done yep. because AM is staying in a stance and able to guard their own. They haven't had the help on a drive yet. Five on the shot clock. McLemore's two for two. He's three for three from three. How do you leave him open? Uh, the ball screen, they have not figured it out. The high ball screen with McLemore. Just a little bit of penetration, then bring it back to him. I have a theory. Nobody makes three threes in a row in a game. It just got disproved. Yep. It, it happened. Three of eight is Auburn, and they're all McLemore's. Mahan. Oh, good. Quick help from Dunbar for the block. I will drop a line on the water as we take a break. When we come back, we'll find out all about Mr. Mitchell and what happened when your pole falls into the water. Do you go in after it? Not I. A little better crowd. Yeah, we're all it's to a good start offensively, but when he's not playing basketball, he oftentimes finds himself bass fishing, including fishing at night. Listen to this story. <laughs> Last year, I was fishing night fish with one of my buddies, and um, we are fishing on a dock, and I wasn't paying attention, and the catfish pulled my rod in the water, and I just instinctively jumped in after it, and it was gone after that. You can't do that. It was like 12, 13 feet deep, and I'm just looking for it in, in pitch black, gone. So. Did, did, you, did it occur to you, like, what am I doing in this right now? No, I'm just, no. Snakes? Man, pole. $200. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it all, but basically his pole fell in the water, and he had earlier told me he had a fear of snakes. He went into the water to get the pole. I said, snakes. He said, pole. $200 pole. Oh, he's right about that. He went in. Yeah, you do. I mean, what's going to happen? Let's Wait a minute. What's going to happen? There's all sorts of creatures in the ponds and lakes. Yeah, but as long as they're not salt water, they're not going to eat you. Really? What's going to eat you? I've seen gators in ponds. They're not saltwater ponds. Really? No. I'd go in. I live on a lake. I'd go in because I there ain't, there's no gators on Geist in Indiana. There might be a otter, but I'm bigger than him, her. In the dark, you think they distinguish size? They know? Yes. <laughs> Night vision. Here we are again. Same ball screen. This time off the side. Macklemore a little bit too far out. 17-13 here, and uh, maybe a shot clock or clock malfunction. I have a theory. We have so many in college basketball clock malfunctions. If you could design a company that does two things, one, makes a clock that doesn't malfunction, and two, makes a telestrator that works, <laughs> you are ahead of the game and make millions. You sell for whatever you want. I got an idea. While we're out fast fishing one day, why don't we kind of put our heads together and come up with a telestrator that <laughs> never fails. How about just a white little board next to you and you could use it, you know, a magic marker, and that would be it. That'd be good. Sharpie. Educating America. Never fails. Sure. So there's Billy. We talked about some of the player personnel issues that he's dealing with. He's got four pretty good recruits, including a couple of three and four stars coming in next year. But when you think about the SEC conference, having seen the teams you've seen and the ones I've seen, what are the challenges that he's going to face this year? Well, look around. All right. This year, he's going to face being undersized. He's going to face inexperience. And that there's nothing he can do about it because nobody cares. I mean, let's be honest. When you lose, you lose. And I'm sorry about, you know, guy gets hurt and the rest of the league is happy about it, right? Now, what you have to do is you have to develop the guys you have. And as you said, pretty good, pretty good guys coming back or coming in next year. Yep. 
And you've got to make sure I'm, I'm a big believer in this Ravi. Everything has to fit. Like I watch teams and sometimes they just don't fit. Well I thought last year's team was interesting between Davis and Williams and, and Hogg. Did they fit. I don't know. Good enough. Obviously sweet 16 last year. Yeah, I mean they got going. But did they ever did you ever look at them last no. year and say you know what they are a final four team with all the talent they had. No you looked at them like all right they got to win so they get to go to the sweet 16 but you figured that's going to be it right. I mean talented but let's be honest we're looking around here place about half fill Kentucky's packed. Right. Bruce got it going at Auburn Tennessee's got twenty three thousand in there that's packed basketball in the, in the league is ridiculously good. Ole Miss arrow pointing up. Oh my gosh is it ever. I think Tom Crane within a couple of years I mean they sold that play they've, they've got seven consecutive sellouts starting last night seven. And, and, and you know we were talking with Bruce earlier. There, there isn't more talent coming out of any one state than there is out of Georgia. No, you got to get the kids out of Atlanta. I yep. get all that. But Tom is that kind of guy. I mean, this league has fantastic older coaches, experienced coaches, combined with history and, well, resources. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of good A lot of, a lot a lot of, of money resources. in this league, brother. LSU. I think you, you know, I was with you when you were talking with uh, Bruce earlier today. The development of teams over the course of a season. SEC may do that as well as anybody and where you see the team in February see the team in January you see how it starts in December and how it ends when you get to the tournament in March does any team any conference develop teams and players like the SEC it's interesting because I, I would say you know Izzo does a good job of it in the Big Ten collectively hey, no, no no I agree I'm thinking individually right but no you're you're right and the other thing is and I think people have always felt this way about the SEC that Jimmy Dyke says there's some dudes in this league now yeah there's some guys who can go get it off the top of the rim and you combine it with some experienced grouchy coaches. You're in business. Four on the shot clock. Two on the shot clock. Fade away. Short. We're going to get a foul on Doughty and that's three shots. Wow. Hey, I was going to say Doughty did a nice job because he pawed at the ball as it was being brought up. But you know what? When he was pawing, he went right into the shooter. Let's see if the shooter kicks his leg. I mean, that's one of the now standard operating procedures for a shooter. He throws his leg out and somehow creates contact with the well, defender. It, it, it is standard operating, but it's supposed to have been eliminated. Well, let's see if it happens here. J.J. Chandler knocks down the first. And I, I didn't see if that was where the contact was, but watch. I think he did. I think he took his left leg and threw it out in front. Good for him. Worked. Uh, Took know. that shot with one on the shot clock. That's that's enough usually to get you benched. Wow. It's like this. Are you pre? Are you for or against stealing signs in baseball? Uh, I'm all right with it as long as oh. as long as you're sitting on a bench and you're watching the pitcher, you can do that. I I don't. I'm not into the whole technology. Hey, we got cameras here. No, I'm saying naked eye. Absolutely. Absolutely good. And I'm for doing whatever you can do to create an advantage for yourself. And if it's kicking out the leg, make the referee call it. He did. So two-point ball game midway through the first. Dan Dockage, Carl Ravage here, SEC, ESPN, U. Samir Doughty doing a lot of dribbling with it. Mayhan bumped him. They're going to end up getting a shot in the corner if Spencer can make it because the help is coming from the right corner off of zero. And if they can reverse it quickly, zero's coming out. But there'll be somebody in the right-hand corner off this ball screen here that will get an open three if they go to the same stuff, which I would because that guy's open. But I put a really good shooter in that corner. Wiley back into the game. Texas A&M 0 for their last four. No field goals last three. So let's get it inside. Boy, he fired that one up against the backboard as well. That's Okiki. Well, Kiki's one of those guys you watch and you just say to yourself, how good can this guy be? Well, that was really good right there, Ravi. He he went up, and unlike what Wiley just did, he drew the contact, kept his chin up, and laid it in, whereas Wiley, you have to have another backboard ready here. Times your flight tomorrow. It takes forever to get a backboard. 
So, given how long it took to fix the clock, if we have to go to a backboard, <laughs> we'll play guy. tomorrow. Here's your guy, Okiki. Finger roll. How about that block from J.J. Chandler at the rim? Hey, but Wiley ran. I mean, I swear to God, Ravi, offensively ahead of the ball, offensively trailing. When big guys run, the ball finds them. Another last second shot clock shot coming up. The offense is stagnant for AM. Should get a three here. Man down. Should kick it to the left corner. Okiki. Way short. Left corner wide open. Whoa! How about the bang and the bucket there? Good body by Javon McCormick. That's a man shot. Either that or it's a lucky shot. Taking the contact, falling down, threw it up. I'm telling you, they never got back a &M. That's something. Look at, those hands. Steal. Look at those hands. They're quick, but the offense for AM is just non-existent. No, it's off. They got a three on one. Dowdy for three. And McCormick somehow comes up with the offensive rebound. We're gonna do it again. Why not? Modern kids don't miss two in a row wide open. They don't seem to be bothered by missing one wide open no, either. Dowdy didn't. <laughs> McCormick found him not once, but twice, and Dowdy didn't care. If he missed, he'd have got another one and made it, or shot it. Yeah, this could get ugly. Saturday, another big SEC ACC double dip on ESPN. 4 o'clock Eastern, number 12, Kentucky, number 14, Auburn. What a game that's going to be at Auburn. And then number one, Duke, hosting unbeaten number four, Virginia, and a Sonic blockbuster, both games. Also on the ESPN app, you can watch anywhere. Saturday primetime is presented by H and R Block. I, I argue that those are two Sonic blockbuster games, given that it's at Auburn, and they are going to be ready for a Kentucky team. Coach Calipari is starting to feel pretty good about themselves. And then, of course, Duke and Virginia. Is that, are those two blockbuster games? I don't think there's any question. I what Virginia did to Virginia Tech. Ooh. Man, do they move the basketball? I, I, they're not the most talented team, but man, do they move it, share it, kick it, Jerome and Guy and Clark on the perimeter with Hunter. They're a little more athletic, aren't they, than they've been? They have some guys that can create their know. own shot. You think they've always been that way, or you don't buy the they're more athletic? I think that the kid Clark, the little point guard, is really good and fast. When I did their games down in the Bahamas, I thought, all right. Savion flag knocks that down. You know what? You know what Virginia is. Virginia is the team that you lose to, and you feel like you should have beaten. You know what I mean? Like, are you? Harper down on the ground. By the way, he's like he grabbed his right ankle or shin. He's back up, and he's so hurt he launched a three and nearly make it. And then hustle after his rebound. Pick that up. Ravi, like you play Duke, you feel like you get beat, you get crushed, right? I right. mean, Virginia, I was talking to coaches in the Bahamas, and they're like, man, you feel like you can beat them going into the game. You play the game, it's a root canal, and then after the game, you're like, oh, man, we should have beat him. It's like the comfortable 0 for 4 for a hitter. Yeah. When you're like, I, I don't get it. How did he get me out four times? Right. And then your career, you're 2 for 26 against him. And you're like, I don't understand that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But when Hunter got hurt last year, did you say to yourself, because I know when I was filling brackets out, they're done. Like They, they yeah. can't go nearly as far as they could have. This year, the way guys playing and the way Hunter's athleticism, you mentioned the point guard, they they feel different to me this year than I've seen them in the past. I don't disagree with that. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. And you know why they went, as I said, that Clark kid, to protect against a quick point guard, like a kid like Harper that can dominate right. you. Texas A&M with 6.48 to go in the first half, coming off a game in which they threw passes that led to three turnovers. They had three turnovers in the game against Alabama. They get 10 in this game. I thought they were so sharp against Alabama, and Alabama's talented. Four on two. Chandler Tricky dribbles there, and he oh, almost laid it in with that left hand. That was impressive. 
J.J. Chandler nearly with a highlight play. J.J. Chandler exploded. You mentioned Tiny Archibald. This is a little bit of Tiny Archibald. Take it the length of the court, spin around, and then mm. get to the rim. Nineteen eighty one Boston Celtics. Uh, he was the twelfth man. NBA champs. Twelfth <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean I, when I think of the nineteen eighty one Celtics, I think of Nate Archibald. He was eighty seven years old. Nate got a lot of minutes in nineteen eighty one. Let's just remember <laughs> early eighties. This isn't this isn't time eighty. This isn't eighty four. I know. Only guy in NBA history to lead it in scoring and assists. I'm a big Tiny Archibald fan. But... Kings, Monarchs, Alley Oop, Wiley caught it on Ooh. the way down. Then he threw it down when he went back up. I thought he got fouled too. I thought he got hit, which probably helped him slow the ball down. Starks really hasn't gotten on track offensively. Well, that was Bruce Pearl's thing. He's, he was not going to let him. If other guys started Look making out. shots, fine. But Savion flag with a line drive. That leads to a quick run out. Block and a bucket. Strength of Bryce Brown. The speed of Bryce Brown. Boy, let's watch Wiley first. Watch this. Throw it up and let the big guy go get it. Pretty good catch. He's got good hands. And then I thought he got hit right there, which he did, but he was able to finish it, and this was just fast. And, you know, sometimes, Ravi, as you well know, the replay or television doesn't do it justice, but you said it. Bryce Brown was flying down the floor, and the finish, terrific. You can make the case this is the best backcourt in the SEC, but, boy, you talk about backcourts in the SEC, they are... Awesome all over the place. Hagen's. Bone and Bowden are tremendous. Hagens is off the charts right now, the way he's playing. How about Ole Miss? They got three three guards. Bruce Pearl's got three guards here, all of whom can run the point and shoot. Brown, of course, earlier this year became the all-time three-point scorer in Auburn history, passing Wesley Person. Starks desperately That's trying foul. to get that first one. He did get hit. There's the tip in. And good offensive work by Christian Mekawulu. Harper kick. Three ball. No good. Look out. Two AM players ran into each other. Mekawulu and Savion flag. We're going to get a foul right on the floor. I thought we got a foul before there was a travel. You know, the one thing you got to admire about AM, they play hard. I mean, you, you feel like they're a little underskilled. You know, you just saw Flag, who hit a three, shoot one dead right. But I'll tell you this, they play really, really hard. Dip off your weekend with our next NBA Friday double dip, 8 o'clock. It's the Spurs and the T Wolves. And then we go to the Staples Center. The Clippers show Steph, KD, and the Warriors, where they have like 51 in the first quarter last night. Ravi, last night, two teams scored 142 points. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a group chat among college or among NBA players, and they're like, all right, tonight, tonight. nobody guard. Right. Like, we got to get the ratings going. It's the middle of January. Football, we're fighting. Let's go. Let's not guard tonight. NBA countdown, 7 Eastern ESPN, the ESPN app. Are you part of a GC? A what? Uh, the group chat? Not that group chat, but many group chats. So you're part of a GC? There's a three from Bryce Brown. That's just, what the kids call it. It's a GC. I, I it's a just group got chat. one from our boss saying, uh, let us go to break before you make any comment. <laughs> that, that was a small group chat. <laughs> yes. Corner three. No, look at Auburn. Get it. Look and at go. Bryce Brown. Yeah. I mean, three-point play, hits a three, rebounds, it kicks it. No travel on he skidded across the lane. I was watching Teddy Valentine. He went with the juggle sign right in front of Billy Kennedy. Did you see the juggling? I saw he travel. Skidded. He skidded across the lane. Like, like the airplane on an icy runway. He like didn't you stop. on a Friday night. He did, though. Ted Valentine was given that whole juggle thing. No travel. All right. You know what the definition of travel is? 
When the referee goes, <laughs> blows his whistle and says, travel. A&M kind of hanging around and certainly not playing a clean first half. Auburn's three-point shooting struggles as well. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're looking up at the clock again. That's a pretty good line by the guy behind us. Can you review it while you're at it? There's nothing to review there. The referee, Ted Valentine, had a great look. And he had Billy Kennedy right next to him. <laughs> he did. And Billy's like, Ted. <laughs> in every league, Ted. <laughs> every league. Oh, that's nice. Ball screen, get a screen, good switch. Brown. Too strong, good battle. McLemore wins it. And you know what? Great no call right there. Brown lets another one go, and he knocks that one down. Bryce Brown eating up. Why? Reason I say no, great no call. Both guys jumped up and had the ball, and then it just became just because people touch each other doesn't mean it's a foul. And then it became who was going to get it. Mclemore did kicked it to Brown. Heck of a call, heck of a non-call, and heck of a play on the offensive backboard. Starks settles into a three of his own. He's off tonight. Man, I think A&M's going to be real careful here. Down 14. Wow. Chance for another three. Brown. He's hot. And Auburn can do that to you. They could put points on the board in a hurry. They get to 40 with 340 to go. How quick was Harper right Woo. there? Cross, cross, kick, drive, kick, fast. Everything. The kick was fast. The dribble was fast. Chandler drives, met by a body. No offensive foul, they'll take it off the board. I keep saying, you cannot go to the rim against Auburn unless you know you can get to the rim on the baseline. But look at Brown right here, Bryce Brown. What can Brown do for you? I know it's a cheesy line, but it's solid. Brown drills it. He's drilled three. He's basically on his own 9-0 run. What do you got Saturday, Dan? Anything? Because if not, just just find a couch. Look at the lineup we have. Starts at 3.30, little NBA action. Then you have that blockbuster game, Virginia Duke. You in the UFC? I am. I love the UFC. UFC making its uh, ESPN, ESPN Plus debut. You're going to see all sorts of UFC action on ESPN on the Plus app. Lakers and Rockets squeeze in there. Saturday night, prime time back. 8.30 Eastern time on ABC. I got noon. Wisconsin at home against Michigan, who should be the new number one team in the country right. if they win the game. It'll be the fastest game in America. The game will be over. Usually college basketball takes two hours. It'll be over in an hour, 30 minutes. Nobody turns it over. Nobody fouls between those two teams. Pretty good. Switching defenses here. 1-3-1. One, one. Wide open, though. Bryce should Brown. Ravi, I'm sorry. You should never get a middle-of-the-lane jump shot against a 1-3-1. One, one. The three <laughs> is a guy in the middle. Starks takes it. Mm. Did Wiley get away with a goaltend? Thought he did. Harper kicks. Brown launches again. He's feeling it. Can't get it to go. Wiley pushes off, and that's an offensive foul. Now, I'd like to take a look at that. It looked like the ball hit the backboard just before Wiley got to it. Watch that ball if it hits the board first. He pinned it, I think, huh? I thought it was on its way down. <laughs> Bruce Pearl gives him a hard high five for his effort. Bryce Brown off to a good start. Five at ten. He's made three threes. He's got 14 in this first half. McLemore has got nine. Way too many turnovers for Texas A&M. Auburn has forced 11 of them. They got 14 points off of it. It occurs to me, you got an Auburn-Kentucky showdown Saturday before that blockbuster. Kentucky really didn't have too big of a battle against Georgia. It doesn't appear as if Auburn's going to have too big a battle here as Brown nails another one is fourth. Good warm-ups for that matchup? Sure. And you know what? I, I really believe this, and we've seen this in college basketball. The team you have today is not the team you had yesterday, and it's not the team you're going to have tomorrow. I, I swear, Ravi, I've seen it all year. So I don't know that my kids forget and they move on, and, you know, it's a big game every time Kentucky goes somewhere, and it's a big game for Kentucky against Bruce. 
I don't know if I answered your question. I, I, I just know they're not guarding Brown even a little bit. Good pass that missed at the rim is McLemore. This is get whatever you shot you want if you're Auburn. Well, you're a coach. I understand sort of I understand the offensive struggles given some of the players you've lost. But the defensive effort or intensity, I don't get that. I mean, you don't need to be terrifically skilled to play defense. No, they're athletic enough that they should be a good defensive team. I'm talking about Texas A&M. Yeah. One of the things in the zone, it doesn't matter the zone you play. I learned this from Calvin Sampson. It doesn't matter the zone you play. It just matters how fast you go in that zone. And how much you get to help side when the ball's on one side. And, and thus far, Texas A&M, whatever zone they've tried, 2-3, 1-3-1, or even man, yeah. they haven't gone hard. Harper misses the one-on-one. -on -one. Feels like, I mean, look, they're up 18. They had a chance to really bury them here in the first mm -hmm. half. Buck 42, kind of an important last 100 seconds in this one for A&M. Incredibly important. You can get buried or you can get back in. Big shot. Flag. Yes, sir. Bottom of the net for Savion Flag. Look at this defense. What defense? Ravi, it's just the referee. Like, the best shooter in the gym is number two in a blue uniform on the court, and he's wearing a headband. And if you don't know where he is, you should not be on the court. Savion Flag has 11 now. Brown 17 in the first half. And he has scored the last 16 points in a row for Auburn. Doughty got great position. He missed a little bunny. So here you go. These last 100 seconds. Another chance here to slice into that lead. Starts. This be big. That's pretty big. kiss. It's big. Hadn't had a bucket all game. 5 0 run. Bruce is changing up the offense, but he doesn't have to. It's just been a matter of whether you're going to make, whether you're going to miss. Right. No resistance. Just haven't made shots. 20 in the first half for Bryce Brown. 20. That was the hardest shot they've had in the last three minutes, and the only one they made. That was tough right there. That's why I think they're a second weekend team, possibly a Final Four in the NCAA tournament, because they can play it any way you want. Bryce Brown just face raked. Well, this is just dancing with the ball right here. He comes off a little screen. They run a little crossing action. Then he just hangs out. Look how easy he gets the ball. The dude has 17 right here, and you let him get the ball easy? No, and your hands are down? Stop it. Got to have your hands up, and you got to make it difficult for Brown to get the basketball, or he will kill you. Brown has scored the last 19 points for AM. 19 in a row. How about get on top of him, make him back cut, make it hard to get the basketball? I guarantee you, not one player on Texas AM's team understands that he has scored the last nine in a row, much less than 19. 20 in the game. There's 25 seconds left to go after this free throw. You think Bryce Brown's going to get the last shot for Auburn? I would assume. I think Bruce Pro has been told by the staff get the ball to Bryce Brown. Auburn has taken. There you go. They denied the top, and they got a turnover. Brown hustles back and deflects it away. Auburn's taken 40 shots tonight. 40. A&M's taken 24. And the reason for that is there has been no resistance on defense. And when they've missed, there's no, been no blocking. Zero. That's a layup. There you go. Missed foul, late call. They're going to get Doughty. Now uh, that'll send John Walker to the free throw line. That was really a nice inside screen to free Walker up. I think the referee was doing a little NBA action there. If the ball went in, he wasn't going to call it, but once he didn't, he had to reward the guy. First three throw, not very close for Walker. I'll ask it again, 11.9. If they get the ball and control it, you think Bryce Brown shoots the last shot? He shouldn't. 
I mean, look, let's look at. Oh, look at He's this. open. Jeez. No nope, doubt he takes it himself, lays it up and in. Auburn goes one way to the other as quick as anybody. And how about Harper? Oh, how about the quick hands of Harper? Boy, the backcourt of Auburn was outstanding. The streak of Bryce Brown is over. With that lay-in from Doughty, he had 19 consecutive points for Auburn, ends up with 20 of the 20, 48. 20 of the 48 from Bryce Brown. 48-32 is our score at the half. Stay with us, halftime, after these short messages. We'll be right back. We're back, campus of Texas A&M, the Aggies, as you're watching the SEC on ESPN, alongside Dan Dockage. I'm Carl Ravitch, 48-32. If you're Billy Kennedy, what are you saying during that half? I'm ripping things apart. I'm destroying the locker room. I'm, I'm combining swear words. I'm going off because it's one thing, look, you just had a big win. It's one thing to get beat when you're down against a good team, but it's another to, quite frankly, not play very hard and particularly getting back on defense. Starks one of seven, first shot within the first five seconds. Didn't get the rim from Mitchell. Can you combo swear words? Oh, I can. I'm a pro. Okay. I learned from the best. See how long it takes Bryce Brown to launch his first. What an impressive performance in the first half. 20 points, including 19 straight for They Auburn. left him. They He's le left again. Uh, it's unbelievable. I was watching Starks. It is unbelievable the inattention by anybody on Texas A&M to a guy that's killing them. Starks has really struggled in this game. His field goal percentage, one of seven. He's well, then, their top scorer. Then you've got to take it upon yourself to guard on the other end. Three-pointer could have been a foul call, but the guy that's helped them stay in this one is Wendell Mitchell. Yeah, he's played a good game. He's played hard. That's his third three of the night. He's had a couple turnovers, but that's a good call right here. He's got nine. Ted Valentine was all over it. Yep. We'll go the other way. A little issue for J.J. Chandler off of that. Look at number two. Number two's kind of drifting, doesn't know where Brown is, and that's the guy you're guarding. Now you got lucky that he missed. But if you want Brown to slow down, you either do one of two things. You hope he misses or you get on top of him, and the only way he gets the ball is if he back cuts or makes two or three cuts to get open. And the reason you do that, Ravi, is you make him uncomfortable. Right now, he does whatever he wants, and right. he knows it. Wiley to the bench with his third. Good ball movement. Will that result in a layup? It does. Nice hanging shot from J.J. Chandler. That was as good a ball movement as we've seen from AM. And the reason it worked was because the initial man beat his man and put the defense in scramble mode. Good start. Great start, actually. And I got it off Harper. Ted Valentine says, no, no, we're going to keep it with Auburn. Look. That's a heck of a dribble. Now everybody's in scramble mode. Everybody's coming to the ball. Guys don't rotate quick enough or under control. And next thing you know, very athletic by Chandler. Couple bad clothes out there. Not really what Bruce Pearl wants to see out of his team to start the half, rather. Outscored 5 0 oh, to start it. Good position for McLemore. We'll keep it right here. They get the foul on Christian Mekawulu. That's kind of tough. Mekawulu was. Was battling McLemore. McLemore had extended an arm. That could have gone the other way very easily. McAwulu, a grad transfer from Tennessee State. He was the player of the year defensively in the Ohio Valley Conference last year. Had a good head-to-head -head showdown with the great Mo Bamba, which he outplayed him. Samir Doughty. Bit of a push shot. Two AM players had it. Starks will dribble away. Mitchell. Boy, oh, that looked good from the go, but doesn't go. We get a good look at that. Here's Harper. In and out. We've got an NBA All-Star game. <laughs> Mitchell's going to get fouled on the shot, so he'll go to the free-throw line. 
Defense became optional for the last minute. Yeah. So has passing. So did passing. Saturday, the SEC ACC double dip on ESPN. Again, 4 o'clock Eastern time. It's number 12, Kentucky, and number 14, Auburn. These Tigers will host. Then number one, Duke, hosting unbeaten number four, Virginia, in the Sonic Blockbuster game. Both games also on the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere Saturday primetime presented by H&R Block. Who's the number one team in the country? You're mine. Tennessee, but I'm loyal. I'm a loyal SEC guy now. I'm a loyalist. But I think talent-wise, I think they're the best. I think resume-wise, Michigan is. I think Tennessee probably is playing the best. We got it under 10. Auburn hasn't scored in the second half and starts nearly stepped in front of that one. McLemore to the rack and a flush. Well, Bruce Pearl wanted his team to start passing the ball. Last time, Harper just took a wild three. That time, the ball crossed the court a couple times. And when you do that against a less than aggressive defense, you're going to end up with a good shot. Stark sees a lane. He hangs. He doesn't get it to go. Kawulu was there. He doesn't get it to go. And now Auburn does what it does best. It pushes. Brown, pretty move. Yeah, and look, even that. He didn't finish on the block out. But even that was good defense just to make Brown have to take a dribble. And then you strip it off of McLemore and you get the ball back. Just play hard. Terrible recovery. Two dribbles, three dribbles, and you passed everybody. And where's the help side? Nobody's coming over to help. Hard to imagine Starks, who averages almost 15 a game, has scored twice, two points. That's way short if it was not deflected. And it'll be Auburn ball. He's just no, not in sync with anything. Good. Well, that's just a bad shot. That's just forcing it. That's going to go to uh, Texas A&M. Oh, they changed it again. The double change. He called it for Auburn, and then he changed it and went here, and then Teddy came in and said, no, the other way. One of nine for Starks. He needs to get to the rim, and what, more, what he really needs to do is forget about his shooting and start guarding everybody and play hard, and it'll all come for him. He's good enough. Dowdy, Brown goes right to the corner, and they find him. He splits the D. Good kick. Boy, Harper stepped into the defense and still made the jump shot. And they're going to look at that to see if that's a three. But, man, that was good ball. You're right. Brown, quick, found the next, great pass. Man, this is a heck of a, a, a backcourt. Both ends. Flag, no. Let me ask you this. Your experience, and we'll go to break. Think about it. When a great player like Starks is playing against another great player, and he's not playing well, does he force the issue? We'll have that convo when we come back. A star-studded Saturday full of NBA, college hoops, and UFC on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ABC. Virginia Duke at six. You know, we try to fit a lot on the page, including the UFC fight. We didn't get the Auburn-Kentucky game in there. That's the one I'm locked into. I mean, if you had to pick one of those events, where are you going? Uh, one of those events? I I'm going to go Auburn, Kentucky. I think it's going to be fantastic. But the game of the day is Michigan and Wisconsin, <laughs> simply because me and the great Jason Benetti are doing it. So, yeah. I don't think what, what is What does you doing that have anything to do with the game being watchable? The you great Jason Benetti, I get. <laughs> but you included yourself with me and. How about just Jason Benetti will be there? Oh, man, I got the beat writer for Auburn basketball not liking me. I got you. <laughs> you got the group chat guy. He's pretty down on you right well, now. Well, you know. <laughs> At least if I, you're going to blow it up, just blow it all up. If I'm going to be in it, I like being in SEC territory. Louisville, the kids they weren't too receptive. Michigan State the other day booed me, so I feel pretty good <laughs> right here, Ravi. <laughs> all right, so I asked the question going to break there. If you're Starks, you're the leading scorer of the team, and you're seeing another guy who plays the same position, Bryce Brown, putting up these bigger numbers. Have you seen players? force the issue try to compete with that guy 
Yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, I remember telling players, don't get in a shootout because you're going to lose because the other guy's going. But I would say this, the way you get out of it is to guard hard, really hard. Like, play almost crazy, this kid. You can't be cool. Cool is for the club. Cool is not for out here. So pick up, get tough, demand to guard Brown, get into him, and I swear the offense will come for him. But if you worry about it, you think about it, or you just stay cool with it, it ain't going to happen tonight. Starts one of nine, Brown, seven of 16 for Auburn. See, pretty good by Chandler, look at that. Now, just get into him, make him uncomfortable. Went to the floor, came up with it. Starts, good block, good follow. It is amazing what happens when you play hard. Okiki, good looking shot. That's a two. How many guys do they have? Look, you got to get into a guy. You can't let a guy get going. Look at Chandler here. He's kicking, he's fighting, he's scratching, he's diving. He beats Auburn to the basketball. He doesn't call timeout. He kicks it ahead. And next thing you know, Starks is going fine. Great defense, but everybody's hustling. Just hustle. Wendell Mitchell was there for the follow. Yeah. Starks one of ten. Mitchell's been the best player, wouldn't you agree? Or the most effective yes. player. And he's been the guy that's played the hardest. It's not hard. AM all their 13 turnovers in the first half. They had yet to turn it over in the second half until right there. Forced. Starks right. forcing the heat. Went one dribble too deep. Probe, kick, and trust you'll get it back. I think players get caught in numbers games too. I think Coach Calipari was making the point last night. Hagen's last week was the SEC Player of the Week. In one game, I think he had five points. The numbers weren't what they were being judged on. You don't just need to put numbers up. He said that's high school stuff. That's exactly right. We talked about Tennessee. I think it was last week or the week before. Grant Williams had five in a game. They won by 20. I guarantee he didn't care. Good wow. meet at the rim by McLemore. Straight up and a block. Lead 15. Good pass. How about that hustle? End to end for Anthony McLemore. Again, just playing hard. Big guys running the floor. Good things happen. Nice. Starks got that one to go finally. His second field goal, and he'll go to the free throw line. And that was pretty athletic. But Ravi, big guys running. Just honest to goodness. McLemore made the block, as you said, and then he just sprinted right down the middle of the floor and was rewarded because he hustled. Your guy, Okike, is really good. When you watch him, there are just flashes of real brilliance, and you just wish that you could leave the light bulb at that same wattage longer. Well, and maybe it, that'll come. It'll come. He's, he's, he's got a great look about him. He hit the long two. He went to the block and got a bucket. Then he went to the block and fed McLemore for a bucket. Pretty good sequence. Really good sequence. Brown not on the floor. They got Dunbar out there. Trapped there. And they're going to get a foul. And the crowd that's here didn't like that at all. The one that's not here didn't like it either. Second on Mekawula, what do you think of it? I thought it was a bad call. Let him play. <laughs> you know, this feels like a 30-point game, doesn't it? I mean, it's only 15. 15 is nothing in college basketball. Starks gets hot, and one of these guys gets hot and gets going. Next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. I think if Auburn is the team currently that you look at as the Fastest team either after a bucket or on a turnover to then score on the other end. Is there any team faster? That's a great point. Ohio State, excuse me, Michigan State's pretty wow. Michigan State's pretty good with it. Cash is Winston, and that's what Tom Izzo does. But no, I, and I've done Michigan State game, and I'm doing this Auburn game, and I would say Auburn's faster. Mitchell. One pass jump shot. Yep. Chance to get it to 21 if that goes, boy. Again, there's that speed. How quick was the miss and then that make of a three? 
four seconds? I don't think he yeah, was, and I don't think he used more than three or four dribbles. He extended the dribble. That's how you get down the court quick. You dribble it out. You don't dribble it at your feet. Hubbard <laughs> is pretty good. Brown has been fantastic. They got we some weapons. They got some weapons. Man, oh man. All right, let's just get it out. One, two, three. How deep is that, Abby? That's coming off the three hit on the other end. Tiny Archibald range. Right-handed. You can win with right-handed. <laughs> One of the Yell leaders here, and that's a huge honor. There are five of them. They're basically voted on by the student body. And look, they can teach uh, 38,000 to stand up. They try to teach Dan and I to do this thing too earlier tonight. All right, howdy guys. My name is Gavin Sewell. I'm one of the Fighting Tech Zaggy Yell leaders. I'm here with the other four. We're going to teach you all the Yell gigum today, all right? So hump it, eggs. There you go. One, two, three. Hey! Kick em, Aggies! Hey! hey. Woo! There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Great job. Guys. I have any idea what the heck we were doing. Great job. Thank you all yelled. Just glad we didn't fall down. <laughs> There's a point of a sort of a makeshift gun. Your left leg's got to go behind you. But at the end, you just kind of give it a whoo! And act like you're shooting up in the air. <laughs> it took me a few tanks. You were on it. It took me like three Please, tanks. It was Look awful. at this. Are we going for three in a row? No. Harper wanted to match the 19. They got a chance for a run out here. And again, Chandler, two guys jumping at the ball. I tell you what, watch Wiley run right here. Look at him run. Give him the ball. Yeah, Wiley, you watch him. He's working hard to get that ball down low. He's looking at his coach. Coach, I'm busting. Have him get it to me. Here he is again. Give it to him. He's going to foul before he can get it in. Under 12. Looks like we're going to get a timeout here on that turnover. Dan's all fired up. Watch him to get that ball in. We'll go over passing when we come back. Back here, did you ever aspire to be a yell leader? I mean, I know you yell a lot. Why not be a leader? No, no, I really didn't. I, I didn't. But hey, look, this is a big deal right here. Congratulations to those guys, man. You know the 12th man thing when it originated? You know the story behind that is? Like back in 1922, there was a guy named E. King Gill who quit playing football to focus on basketball and there was a game called the Dixie Classic he was up in the press box working as a spotter they were taking on a team from Center College which is like the best team in the country every offensive player basically got hurt coach says I need you to come down from the press box put a uniform on and play he comes down he never gets into the game but that led to this sort of theory where everybody is willing to go in and do whatever it takes to help the team out. That's why they stand during the entire game here. That's the 12th man story. That, see, that's a great story, Navi. And, and to me, that's what makes college so great. There's so many different traditions. There's traditions, whether it's where you go eat before. I mean, there's just so many cool things. And yeah. I think the 12th man deal with midnight, the yell practice, is one of the coolest things ever. Chris Collins, number 12, comes into the game for Texas A&M. See if they can get some shooting going. Of course, one of the football players gets to wear the number 12. Sprawling. Hey, that, guy, that guy, this year, was good. He was long-haired. Look yeah, at this. Gillespie. Oh, oh Wiley had it. Lost it. I didn't like that at all. I, he should not have said it. Blocked. Wow. Wiley went up and he was denied. Josh Nebo with the block. Man, I like Nebo. Nebo plays hard. Nebo plays defense. And there you go. Every time they've done something with effort on the defensive end, it's led to points. Ravi, the ball knows. 
The ball knows? The ball is a living, breathing <laughs> organism, and it rewards. I would throw this in there, but you can't set it right here. You got to go to the rim. There you go. I'm telling you, they cannot stop him on the block. The only thing that stops him on the block, Okeke, is if he settles for a jumper like he did last time. He is really good. Juma Okiki, only a sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia, went to Westlake High School. So you and I were talking, you know, Tom Crean in Georgia. That's the kind of kid you got to keep in state. Higgins, right. Georgia. Yep. A lot of really good players in Georgia. Is Bruce Pearl telling us a story about Higgins? Did Higgins commit to Auburn first? Then he committed to Georgia? Decommitted to both of those and ended up in Kentucky? Yeah, he said he committed to Auburn. Auburn had those issues. You know, right. where the investigation, all that kind of stuff. So he got scared of that. Then he went to and committed to Georgia. And then my, uh, Mark Fox got fired. Yeah. Next thing you know, Higgins ends up starting at point guard for Kentucky. He went to the same school as that Lawrence kid, the quarterback for Clemson. Right. They also had a first round pick. I can't have his name here in front of me. I'm searching for it. But the Yankees from the same high school, the same high school class. I'd go right back down to Okike on the block, and he's not even in the game. I'd still go on the block. <laughs> That'd be something. I don't care. Oh, how about that effort to hang and hit from Javon McCormick? They just got guys that can make plays. Who can't make a play out here? Everybody's making plays or trying to make plays. There's a final, a foul on Wendell Mitchell. This is pretty good. This is like their eighth guy, McCormick, here, right? I mean, he just handles it, puts his chin on the rim, keeps keeps the ball under, keeps his elbow under the ball, and man. Let me ask you, Ravi, you were just last night at Kentucky. Can Auburn beat Kentucky? Yeah. Anywhere. I'm not just talking about at home. I mean, everybody beats everybody at home, but in, in, in a tournament, for example. Who's uh, better team? It's close. I think it's close. I really do. I think the so I think they have great size. I think when Okiki, I guess Okiki would be one of those guys. If I'm thinking about Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams breaking it down, he may be one of those guys they talk about because I think Harper and Brown against that backcourt with Hagens is kind of a push. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's a push. That's a bad pass. You think this backcourt's way better? I don't think it's way better, but I don't think it's a push. I, I think that Brown and Harper and these guys can play against any type Hero of defensive and pressure. Hero played really well. I did the game with Louisville. I do. I was, he was the great sideline reporter. He was fantastic. I just don't notice Kentucky shoot it well enough that if Auburn is shooting the basketball, as Sonny Smith and I were talking just in the last break, when they shoot it, man, they're dangerous. Starks is the kind of night he's having. When Auburn's going to make their threes, you know, they get 12 of them tonight, and we still got eight minutes to go. If they're going to make their threes, they're probably going to win the game. But you're take, you're discounting the defensive effort by the team that's playing them. Hard to make 12, 15 when some team's playing great defense. We're not seeing that from AM tonight. Not even a little. I think Auburn can beat them. I think Auburn will beat them. They will. How about the 12th man? Look quiet right now, but this is the home of the 12th man. Nowhere else. Pelicans Warriors and after the buzzer with Stan and Neal from L.A. They're going to look at the biggest concerns and have reports from the Chiefs past Ram Saints. What do the numbers say about Harden's historic case for MVP with the Rockets hosting the Nets? And Rachel Nichols has an exclusive interview with Boogie Cousins ahead of his long way to return on Friday. That's Sports Center tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Sometimes you have a blackout when the power goes out. You know what we've had tonight in the second half? Tell me. A brownout. How so? No points after 20 in the first. No points. It's a brownout. <laughs> Not feeling that? Oh, Who do you got? Pats? Chiefs? Ram Saints? A little surprised at the way the Chiefs handled my... Indianapolis Colts, but I'm going to take the pass. I'm not going against Belichick. I, I you know, to be honest, Patrick Mahomes, the most fun player in the NFL or that the NFL has seen in a long time. And 
Well, I think he'll have, unlike the Colts, I think he'll have a little setup for Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's really good. Cool. The Chiefs, don't the Chiefs remind you a lot of the younger edition of the Patriots when Gronk was Kelsey's athletic ability and Brady could move a little bit. Never could move like Mahomes, but he was he was a little bit more. You know what I like about Mahomes? Mahomes is like that kid that plays basketball that didn't need a trainer growing up. Like, didn't, maybe he can't dribble bas six basketballs at one time and brush his teeth like all these right. individual workout. He's just a guy that looks like he just balled. He just wins. You know, well, and he balled. He balled on a street. He balled yeah. in a park. He balled, you know, nobody, nobody made him. He just played and... Got really good. It's pretty good stock when your dad was a major league baseball pitcher. Yeah, his dad came to the Cubs. I thought he was our guy. I thought he was our guy to lead us to a championship. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. First was Rick Sutcliffe. He came close. Eleven Wendell Mitchell to the line for the Aggies shooting two. I like this kid. I like this kid Mitchell. I think this kid Mitchell plays hard. I think he stays within what they're trying to do. Doesn't seem to have an ego, and he's having a good game. One of the teams we didn't talk about in this conference was LSU and what uh, Will Wade's got going on down there. I know you talk about dudes a lot. They, they got some. They probably have. A two, Nas Reed's an NBA player. Waters. Tremont Waters and Skyler Mays. I don't know if they're NBA players. There's a great back. Door move and Okiki lays it in. That was just a simple up screen where really the guy guarding the screener is responsible for protecting the basket. And in this instance, the guy guarding the screener had no interest in doing anything other than hugging his man. And when you do that, you get a layup. Savion flag can't get it to go. And it looked like his own player was playing defense against him. I think his own player fouled him. How's Auburn Arena going to be on Saturday? I think it's going to be My insane. Goodness. I wish I could go. I'd like to just go. Can we got a private plane? Get me from Madtown, Madison to. Well, you said the game's going to last about an hour and a half. You got a chance to get there. Here's your guy Mitchell Look with a Brown steal. Hustle Brown hustles. Yes, sir. Fouls him nearly deflected in his own shot with his left hand, but Mitchell will go back to the free throw line. Up 20. Bryce Brown still hustling back. I love this team. I love watching Auburn play. Look at this. Just a little back cut. You get a dunk. I was wrong. There wasn't a back screen. I missed it. Look at that, though. You're coming out there. If you're Walker, you're, you're walking out. You're not in a stance. You're not extending your inside arm. I mean, what are you doing? How's, how's the film session going to be? You know, unfortunately, so many coaches are afraid of players these days. They're afraid that they'll get transferred. The film session should be tonight. The film session should be. I don't even know if it's legal anymore, but hey, fellas, go get something to eat. We'll meet back here at 12.01. Last till 3. Don't at me. That's a young kid's thing, too. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> don't at me. Don't at me. We've got the GC and at me. Group chat and at me tonight. Yeah, I don't want to hear from your, your guy. We play like this. We're having a film session at midnight. Gene Cady talks about practices on the way home from bad losses. Tipped up and in. Good effort from Horace Spencer. Where's everybody else for Texas A&M? This is, honest to goodness. He, uh, he's had a good offensive game. There's nothing that irks me more than not playing hard. You'd only have 30 games in a year. It's not like Major League Baseball where you got 162. You're 18 to 22 years old. If you can't play hard for 30 minutes every four days, I don't know what's wrong with you. You shouldn't be out here. Flags got 22. Are you implying that of the 162, if you're playing 150, maybe you're taking a night off? Oh. I think they give players rest for that. There you go. I mean, baseball, you're standing around half the time anyway. What are you doing? You're mentally focused. Laser focused. Please. I think golfers stay focused for every shot they hit. Uh, the good one. Every shot. The good one. Uh, the great. Every shot. Good pass inside and a foul. 
from behind. Do you? Do you think they do? No, I don't. I think I think that I don't think they do that at all. Do you think it's too much to ask a college kid to come out at home after a big win and play as hard as you can play? No. If you were looking to have some momentum off of that buzzer beating win over Alabama, this was an F. This was a fail. How about have pride? Like I always, Ravi, I don't know how you feel about this, but I don't know when it became we play hard for our coach. Or I don't want to play hard for that coach. I, I never heard of that. Like you play hard because you got a white jersey on you and you're on a team you're not on the coach to get you to play hard. It's on you to get yourself to play hard. Is there a group think around that do you think I mean does it become a contagious thing where you kind of look over at your teammate and, you, and I'm not excusing it is I'm asking is it a group think where everybody just kind of like ah, it's not not tonight and maybe not this year which would be awful. Yeah, I, I, yes, absolutely. But I, I can't imagine. I mean, I played on Coach Knight's worst team in the Big Ten, and I never felt that way. I don't know. I, I, it's like, but it's so different now. I mean, everything is scrutinized. You play well, it, it, you're so praised. And we've seen it this year. Like, look, New Mexico beat Nevada off 25, whatever it ended up. The next at, at New Mexico, in the pit, tough place to play. The next night out, New Mexico in the pit against an okay UNLV team gets crushed. You know, I've seen it so many times this year in college basketball. I, people always ask me, what's the best thing Coach Knight ever did as a coach? You know what the best thing was? He kept you grounded. Because you had a big win. You know what? I don't want to hear about it. Let's go. We got another one the next day. At what point do you recognize the separation between the teams that believe we got a chance to win this thing this season and the ones that don't? I mean, we are four games into conference play. Are there teams that already have figured that, that believe, like, no? So as a result of what we've decided, that will mirror our effort, whereas you assume LSU, Tennessee, in this case, Auburn, Kentucky. Every night you will get that because if we slip up, we don't finish first in the conference and we're and we're in that conversation well, if you feel like you're not good enough then they should eliminate guaranteed scholarships and you shouldn't be on a scholarship i mean no and my answer is absolutely not i mean I, I, how can you as a player now you, you get to this level by having a certain toughness about you a certain mentality Kind of walking off the floor a little slowly. I've asked you a lot of questions tonight. We're going to have somebody else ask you a question when we come back. Somebody okay. else is chiming in. Somebody interested, I hope. Hey, Dan. Heard you calling the game before us. Who do you think is going to win the Big 12? Well, I think Kansas until further notice. I know no Azubuki, but until Iowa State or anybody else proves me wrong, you've gone about a decade and a half winning the league I'm not going to say they're not and Iowa State needs a win it's going to be a good game next Texas Tech would be the other team I would say Chris Beard's team has a real shot but until proven wrong it goes through Kansas in my little world what happened to Iowa State after they beat Kansas what happens to most college kids after they have a good win they effort effort well, they listen to everybody around them the only person telling you you're not great on a major college campus after a big win are your coach and you know what? If you're going to listen to the what does what does Saban call it? The rat poison, the noise, the outside noise, and you're going to be in trouble. I mean, look at Arizona State. They beat Kansas and they lose to Princeton. Now Mitch Henderson's a really good coach and was a really good player, but come on, you shouldn't lose after you're good enough to beat Kansas. You're good enough to beat Princeton at home. But how many years you've been involved with college basketball? Since the fall of 1981. So have, have the number of voices that impact players oh. grown, or is it the same? Was it no. always that way? No, it's grown because now everybody's a reporter. Like, if you dog it, I'll, I'll give you an example. The other day, Indiana's playing um, Nebraska, and Indiana doesn't hustle down. Now, Indiana fans are crazy and all that stuff. 
but the videos that people shot on their TVs because they can rewind the play of guys not hustling. There's like 20 of everybody's everybody's a TV station now. Oh, it's ridiculous. And then you got announcers like me that think they know it all. It's it's awful. Offense. Stark, that was a push off. He got away with it. His Harper ended up in row one with the yell leaders. And my man Sonny Smith to my right is not liking that call. His arms are up. He's not happy. The other voices I'm talking about, though, are the ones that are telling you how good you are when you may not be that good. Have those voices increased? Five guys telling you how to shoot. You got a shooting coach. You got your dad. You got some advisor. You got some buddy. You got a high school coach. Have those voices increased? Right. I mean, they've increased by tenfold. I mean, the only person, like, let's put it this way. When I was in college, you called your family Sunday night because you got the best rates. And you didn't have a cell phone. No. Right. And so it wasn't like you, you, you walked around and somebody said, hey, you should get more shots. I mean. Right. I mean, I guess maybe your friend did. But yeah, the ability to communicate is far greater. That You're right. Who had a workout coach back then? Right. Nobody, I didn't even have an AAU coach. And who wanted one? I didn't want to listen to these clowns. I wanted to play on my driveway. Go to the park. Flag, contested three, rattles in and out. He's had a good night. We've seen Mitchell go for a career-high 22. Yeah, it's funny. We did a thing for ESPN.com. Seth, oh, that's a bad play. He should have just laid that in. Seth Greenberg, myself, and Fran Priscilla, and we were asked what current coach, which, look at this. I'll tell you what. Oh! A little noise there and a good feel for Horace Spencer. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of Nebo. He needs to start next game. He's playing hard. Hey, they were, we were all asked, who, who would, of the current coaches, who would you want to play for? I said Tom Izzo because I, I don't care to hear about anybody. I don't want to hear about the personal life, their religion, nothing from my coach. I just want to be coached hard. And that's why I said Izzo. What, who, do you have a thought on that? Well, I like I love the accountability of Izzo. I think there's a handful of coaches that require you to be just accountable. And if you're looking to be on a team where you're going to get compliments all the time, that's not going to happen. I like the way Barnes handles the players. I think Fran said Jay Wright. Well, Seth said e Izzo. Easy to like. Look, I mean, I, I don't know anybody that gets more out of his players at a younger age than Calipari does. I, I, clearly, there's a lot that goes along with it, but I could love, he I turns love them that. into great players real quick. I just want to, I just want to be coached. I think he coaches. I think uh, he I doesn't agree. get nearly oh. enough credit for his coaching. Hey, let me tell you something. He's a, not a good coach. He's a great basketball coach. Right? You can take all that recruiting. John Calipari is a great, great coach. All you got to do is go to one practice. Boss hasn't texted us in a while, so I feel good about this broadcast. Zero, JJ Chandler to the line for the Aggies, shooting two. And our GC. You're all about that now. Don't at me. <laughs> What's your favorite emoji? Don't have one. Do you know what they are? I just learned. I learned about those in GIFs. I love sending that GIF of money. <laughs> a gift. A gift. I send it to my daughter all the time when she asks for cash. Just gif it up. And I tell her, don't at me. Aggie substitution, Chris Collins for J.J. Chandler. Auburn gets set for their showdown with Kentucky. You'll see that this weekend. Who wins? I think Auburn at home. I think it's really close. I think Auburn at home wins that game. I think that place will be a madhouse. And I think these guys are feeling really good about themselves. How do you not leave tonight feeling really good about yourself? And your point's well taken. Bruce Pearl showed him 20 things they didn't do right. Like that. Oh, he got a lot. I always say this, Ravi, and I catch heck for it, but there's three great days in a coach's life. Wedding day, birth of a child, and a road win. There's nothing better than a road win. And, and the order depends on how big it is. <laughs> Horace Spencer went up. <laughs> Bruce Pearl, I think, said nice drive, which I think he appreciated the drive. He, he obviously didn't like the uh, 
the, the, the last strokes of the painting, but he liked to drive. Fitting. Brown one more time. First points of the second half. He's thinking alley oop. Oh, he was trying to throw it off the window for Dunbar. Yeah, people can complain about that. I hear him behind me saying you shouldn't do that. But look, there's still time on the clock. Grammy, I've always, I remember being in coaches' meetings with other coaches saying, "Look, don't get. I won't get mad at you if you play it out, and don't get mad at me." You know what I mean? I mean, you know, kid, kid comes in the game. I want to get him a bucket. Sport of baseball goes through that all the time when there's a six seven run lead and somebody's stealing the base and everybody gets all mad. Well, I don't get it. I mean, I say you play till the buzzer. Figure it out later. The goal is to win. The goal isn't to make it less painful on the team you're beating. No. The goal is to win. In truth, <laughs> it's actually to make it more painful. You want them to remember, like remember the Titans. Auburn will leave here with a road victory. And they improved to 2-1 and one in the conference. A&M, after their victory over Alabama, drops to 1-3. and three. And really what was a flat, kind of uninspired effort for the home team from Texas A&M tonight. Yeah, really disappointing for Texas A&M. And I know that Coach Kennedy is not going to be happy, nor should he be. But this guy here has his team rolling. You know what, Ravi? They could have played well, Texas A&M, and still gotten beat by double digits. That's how good Auburn is. Yeah. They played great tonight. There were a lot of good moments, and we will discuss that with the head coach, Bruce Pearl. He'll join us here on ESPNU. We'll talk about this game and the upcoming showdown with Kentucky as Dan and I continue the SEC on ESPN. Uh, I'm going to get out of the way here. 66, the head coach, Bruce Pearl, joins us now. What did you uh, like? What are you going to leave with what you like tonight? I thought effort and energy were good. Uh, mixing up defenses was good. Bryce Brown wasn't bad, right? He got kind of he feeling a little bit. 19 in a row. Did he have 19 in a row? Yeah. 19 in a row. Feed the hot hand, right? Right. A couple of heat checks and things like that. But that's how we play. That's how we are. Um, you know, please, it's a it's a good SEC row where that team beat Alabama. That team, you know, was five or six points to Kentucky. So um, that was good. Was solid. How does it translate to the Kentucky game Saturday? Uh, it doesn't because you take them one at a time. It's such a grind. And I know when people hear that, they think you just, well, what does that mean? No, it means it's a completely different team, completely different prep. Now, it may take, may give us a little bit more confidence going in. But, you know, home games against Kentucky, you know, you got to take advantage of them because they ain't going on the road very often, right? They ain't going on the road. The crowd will be there, but they're not going to rebound for us, not going to play. And Cal's got his team playing really well. Really well. Hey, different basketball. So the balls went in tonight, 13 to 34 from three. I'm a better coach when the ball goes the in. The ball goes in. <laughs> Bruce Pearl picks up a victory. Huge game with Kentucky coming up. Dan Dockage, Bruce Pearl, I'm Carl Ravage.